In China, police have been clashing with protesters throughout the country after 10 people were burned alive in their apartments. This after the Chinese Communist Party reportedly locked them inside as part of its new COVID lockdowns. Just how serious is the situation in China? And what do these protests indicate about the direction of the Chinese Communist Party? Joining me with answers is China affairs expert, columnist, and author of The Great U.S.-China Tech War, Gordon Chang. Gordon, thanks for being with us. Uh, these protests we are seeing are no small thing in China. They originated from the party's zero COVID policy, but now th they seem to really be protests against Xi and the party itself, with protesters chanting down with Xi Jinping. How serious are these protests? Yeah, this is stunning, Raymond. And the reason is that, uh, yes, it was the zero COVID policies that uh, contributed to those 10 deaths on November 24th. But immediately, people went to the root cause of this, that they realized the Communist Party's system didn't work, was causing all of these problems, including deaths. And yeah, they were chanting uh, down with Xi Jinping, down with the Communist Party. And we got to remember that in 1989, uh, we had months of protests in about 370 Chinese cities. Then um, the Chinese people didn't want the Communist Party to go. They just wanted the party to get rid of a hardliner and to sort of open up a little bit. Now the people have mm -hmm. revolutionary sentiments. Mm. Uh, we saw the Chinese this week back down on some of these zero COVID policies. Have these protesters succeeded in a way? Um, there are indications in reports that the regime will loosen up zero COVID. But we've got to remember that on November 11th, in response to protests in Zhengzhou at that iPhone plant, that the regime announced 20 liberalizations. And those really weren't implemented, or they were implemented in half-hearted fashion. Um, I think what's happened, though, is that the protests since uh, the no November 24th fire were so serious that the regime right now is terrified. And so it is backing down. Um, but, you know, it, we're going to have to just wait and see what actually is implemented. Got to remember mm -hmm. that uh, the, um, the government's been building these enormous quarantine facilities, 250,000 units in Guangzhou alone. Right. And that's a real indication they're going to do something really hard line. Mm. Yeah, I want to get to that again in a moment. But uh, we've seen the police brutality here against these protesters. But for the most part, the protests have not been stopped by the CCP. I mean, you, you had the People's Daily, the leading publication in China, doubling down on the zero COVID policy created by Xi. Why do you think Xi didn't crack down harder on these protests? I mean, he could have swept them away. Why not? I think that probably he was a little bit worried about the police. Um, you know, mm. he uh, controls the army and, and looks all powerful. But you got to remember that uh, people in the police, people in the army, they're people, too. And um, there's a lot of sympathy for what the protesters are talking about, because these zero COVID measures, uh, which have been in place now since early 2020, um, they're hated. Um, and that's a sentiment mm. across society. And that's why immediately after that fire, um, there were these demonstrations yeah. in east and west, south, north and south. And there was no coordination. There was no leadership. There was mm. this no organization. This is because the Chinese people are thinking the same way. And I think Xi Jinping realized that there was only so much that he could do. You tweeted out, and you mentioned it a moment ago, video of this newly constructed quarantine camp in Guangzhou. Uh, the, the, it's being completed to hold 250,000 people. Is the CCP planning on imprisoning people, do you think? And, and, and what about treating them, and why are we hearing no condemnation from the Biden administration or the U.N. regarding the human rights uh, being endangered here? or, or the, the rights that could be endangered, given these uh, facilities we see? Yeah. The, the erection of these facilities, I think, does indicate that the regime is thinking of uh, imprisoning um, mass numbers of Chinese, because it's not just the one in Guangzhou. Mm. Um, they, these things are being built across the country in large numbers. 
Um, And obviously disease control can't be the explanation for it. So yes, we can only speculate what Xi Jinping is thinking, but the objective factors indicate a mass imprisonment of the people in China. As for President Mm. Biden, um, these dispiriting comments from his administration on Monday uh, are a real indication that, um, first of all, I, I think Biden doesn't understand what's going on. Uh, if he is, he's mm. um, he's sort of given up on freedom and democracy. And remember, uh, when he was campaigning for president, he was contrasting himself with President Trump, saying that he, Biden, would be the human rights president. Well, that's not been the case because he has not been standing for human rights anywhere, really. Uh, not mm-hmm. Hong Kong, not Iran, and certainly not in China this past week. Yeah. You mentioned those protests at the iPhone plant in Zhangzhou um, as a result of new contracts that negatively affected employer salaries or benefits, bonuses. There's been a lot of police brutality at those protests. What do they tell us about the control the CCP has on the people of China? It seems things are getting out of hand, uh, Gordon, and they really don't control the people or, or, or their passions the way they once did. Yeah, the Zhengzhou protests are really um, extraordinary. I mean, they started at the end of last month where we had uh, the workers escaping the plant, climbing over fences, um, walking through the fields, um, and also the response of the communities around the plant to help the workers flee. And and they were at great risk to themselves by helping the workers. Um, You know, in many respects, you Mm -hmm. could say that this is the most important factory in China. We know that the Communist Party spent a lot of time trying to figure out what went wrong, and the last couple of weeks have been putting together um, all sorts of makeshift solutions. But those makeshift solutions actually made matters worse, and they flared up the protests again, as we witnessed Mm. about a week ago. And people are saying that, uh, and I think this is exaggeration, but there's blood on the streets now in Zhengzhou. Um, But the point is that uh, despite all the incentives the party had to get this right, they completely screwed it up. Hmm. How could the instability in China impact the United States? I mean, this is an important iPhone factory, and this is just one of so many industries that are instricably bound up in the international, in international commerce, as well as commerce with the United States. The first thing, of course, is um, the supply chains will be disrupted. You know, first, there have been problems at this plant for quite some time, and there was a lot of happy talk from Apple. Now they're becoming a bit more realistic. Um, They can advertise iPhone 14s all they want in the U.S. question is whether they'll be able to deliver them. But the more um, Mm. fundamental impact, I think, is that Xi Jinping, he's lost hearts and minds in, in China. And the only way that he can unify the Chinese people right now is to go to war with somebody create some incident. Um, And that could be, of course, against Taiwan, Japan, Philippines, Uh India, and against us, because he's been challenging our planes, for instance, in international airspace. Mm. Yeah, well, we we saw that fly over the other day in in, uh, South Korea. Uh, So it's it's clear that he is engaging in provocative uh, incitements to see, I guess, to test what the reaction will be. How do you think the U.S. would respond uh, should China do something awful against Taiwan, for instance? Um, You know, we've heard President Biden on those four media interviews saying the U.S. would intervene militarily. But after those mm-hmm. four interviews, we've heard his subordinates um, contradict him. Um, and really what yep. this says is that the administration's in disarray and really has not crafted a response. Um, President Biden tried to clean it up after his uh, summit with Xi Jinping at the G20. You know, we really don't know. Um, and this is going to be, I think, the critical test of American credibility, not just in Taiwan or not just in Asia but around the world. So I hope that President Biden's Mm. response is vigorous and that we will defend Taiwan, because for so many reasons, defending Taiwan is defending America. Well, Gordon, you mentioned this earlier. Um, the, the, The White House statements on these protests have been muted at best 
a uh, week at worst. Uh, earlier this week, the White House's National Security Council said this of the protests. We've long said everyone has a right to peacefully protest here in the United States and around the world. This includes in the PRC. Now, no condemnation of the zero COVID policy, no condemnation of Xi and his thug state. Why is the Biden administration being so careful to condemn anything happening in China? And what should their posture be, Gordon? I wish I could see into the head of Biden. Um, but, you know, I, I, my guess is just that he's got this outdated notion that we cannot anger China. And, of course, he wants Beijing's assistance on climate change. Um, both of those are wrongheaded for various reasons. Um, but the most important thing for an American president to do is to stand up for our values, for freedom and for democracy, because if we don't do it, nobody else will. And the Chinese will notice yeah. our uh, inability to um, support our own ideals, and they will press the advantage. Mm. This happened in 2009 when Secretary Hillary Clinton, um, she said she wasn't going to press human rights with the Chinese. And the Chinese immediately then engaged in an act which actually constituted an act of war against the U.S. They had attacked an American ship in international water. You know, I, Biden was vice president then. He should have known what would happen then, and he should know what's going to happen now. Hmm. I want to move on to a meeting that took place earlier this month. Chinese bishops, priests, theologians, of the country's state-run church, the Chinese Catholic Patriotic Association, formally briefed Hong Kong clergy on implementing Xi's socialistic vision of religion. In his opening speech, Bishop Shen Bin, president of the China's Catholic Bishop Con Bishops Conference, stressed that Xi had, quote, once again put forward the requirement of adhering to the direction of sinicization of religion in China and actively guiding religion to adapt to the socialist society, and that the Catholic Church in China was gradually determined to follow the path of sinicization that is compatible with the socialist society in terms of pastoral care, evangelization, and formation. Gordon, your thoughts on what the bishop had to say? And how much reach does mainland China now have in Hong Kong when it comes to religion? Um, when it comes to religion in Hong Kong, as everything else, um, Beijing runs um, the former British colony. Um, really, what Xi Jinping is doing is he is trying to eliminate Christianity uh, and Catholicism in China. And his agreement with uh, Pope Francis, which has just been renewed, um, and in which he's already violated a uh, number of times, uh, is, I think, yep. um, undermining faith in, in China. What we have seen from, from indications are that uh, people have sort of left the patriotic Catholic Church. Um, they are going into underground Catholic, um, um, of the, the underground Catholic Church. And what we are also mm -hmm. seeing is the underground Protestant church, um, I think, benefiting yep. from the persecution. Um, because the harder the Communist Party persecutes Christians, the more the faith in China flourishes, both Catholic and Protestant. So um, mm -hmm. I, I think that Xi Jinping is very clear. He wants to eliminate faith. Um, and there should be no compromise with that at all. Yeah. Last week, Cardinal Joseph Zen was tried and found guilty of failing to register a now-defunct fund to help people arrested in those widespread protests three years ago. Following his sentencing, he spoke to reporters. I'm just a Hong Kong citizen who strongly supports providing humanitarian assistance. Although I'm a religious figure, I hope this won't be associated with our freedom of religion. It's not related. Uh, your reaction to those comments, and are you surprised by the lack of intervention from the Vatican on Zen or any of these uh, protests that are currently happening in China? Cardinal Zen is one of the world's great heroes, and he should never have been tried in the first place. Um, he should never have been convicted. Um, I guess we can't be surprised because the outcome of the trial was um, always uh, known. Um, you know, the, the Vatican should support um, Cardinal Zen. Um, it's, in a sense, not surprising because Pope Francis has shown that he wants to work with Beijing. 
and has made concessions which I think are not in the interest of the church. Um, but in any event, um, I do hope that Pope Francis um, changes his views about uh, communist China because Xi Jinping means to eliminate all faith, including Catholicism, in China. And he should understand that there is no compromise with Xi Jinping. Yeah. Uh, Gordon, before I let you go, uh, Jimmy Lai, uh, who's, you know, another hero and heroic figure in Hong Kong, who stood up for the democracy movement, stayed behind when he could have left before he was arrested. Um, he, like Cardinal Zen, you know, they were they were found guilty of minor offenses, but then they that begins uh, to to be established as predicate um, and, and evidence of their wrongdoing. And then the Chinese communists keep upping the charges and dragging them into deeper uh, uh, prosecutions here. Where do you see his case? Uh, it looks like he's not going to be able to bring in the lawyers he hopes to bring in, a British lawyer, um, and he's being tried by a judge panel rather than a jury. Jimmy Lai I'm talking about here. Yeah, Jimmy is another hero, as you mentioned. Um, he's, I believe, 75. Um, he will yeah. be in jail for the rest of his life unless the, someone intervenes. And so far, we have not seen the Biden administration do anything in that regard. Um, Jimmy is a uh, beacon. He is unbreakable. And um, we can only hope that uh, the United States and others will rally to him. But uh, in any event, mm -hmm. we know that communism will never break Jimmy Lai. Yeah. Gordon, we will leave it there, but I agree with you. And uh, Bill McGurn's great piece in The Wall Street Journal this week, which I posted on my Twitter feed, people can go read it, uh, calling out the, the, the fact that this is really exposing the big lie in China and the uh, fraudulence of their justice system, uh, this entire kangaroo court surrounding uh, Jimmy Lai and, I might add, Cardinal Zen. Gordon Chang. We'll leave it there for the latest columns by Gordon. You can visit him on Twitter at Gordon Chang. Thank you again.